Hey there, GED math students or any math student that is watching my video. You might see a problem like this um, that we're about to go over on the GED math test or on an algebra test and it deals with rate of change or slope. It's actually an application of slope, a real world application. So let's jump into question one. It says find the rate of change, i.e. slope and write it as a unit rate, then explain its real world meaning. So before I do this, let's go over to the graph here and just see if you can figure out some stuff just by looking at the graph. You should see the title of the graph is right here. It's gas mileage. That's important to, to read. Now you know what this graph is talking about. And then down here on my x-axis, I know that these numbers here represent number of gallons. And on my y-axis here, these numbers represent number of miles probably driven in your car. Now, let's go back to the question. It says find the rate of change or slope. Let's do that first, and then we'll write it as a unit rate. So why don't you pause the video and see if you can find the slope of this line. Welcome back. Remember, if you watch my previous videos, I hope you did. I've done a whole bunch of videos on slope. Hopefully you remember that to find the slope, you need to pick at least two points on this line and they need to fall or be located where the grid lines touch each other, like right here. They need to fall where the grid lines touch each other. So let's pick a point on this line. Here's one right here. Right here is a nice one. I'm going to keep going and pick another one that falls where the grid lines touch each other right here. And here's another one. Now you really only need to pick two. I pick three. I mean, you can make a slope triangle with these, these two points. You can use these two points, or you can even use this point and this point. Doesn't matter. I'm going to use these two points right here. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this point right here. So the next step is to connect these two points using a slope triangle. It has to be a right triangle. So I always work from my farthest left point to my right point, and I'm going to connect these two points with a right triangle or a slope triangle. And I'm going to start here. And my first movement's always up or down, depending on what I need to do to get to this point. Some teachers will have you move right or in other directions, but I do it this way. I'm going to move up. And again, there's more than one way to do this. I went over that in my other videos. And then I'm going to move to the right. So what I have done is I have connected these two points with a slope triangle. Now you could have actually gone this way and up. There's other ways to do it. Keep that in mind. I'm going to put in arrows to indicate how I moved. So I moved up and to the right. And we know, just as a refresher, that the slope or rate of change is positive because the line is slanting upward from left to right. So I know my um, slope will be positive. Now, if you remember from my previous video, slope or rate of change is um, represented by the letter M. And it's defined as, one way to define it is the change of Y divided by the change in x. That's one way to uh, define the slope. Now the change of y is this length here, and the change of x is this length. Remember, x goes this way, and y goes up and down this way. So what is the change of y? That's what these little triangles mean, the change of. What is this length right here? Well, a lot of students make this mistake. They say this change here is a 1, 2, 3, and they say it's 3. But you have to be very careful. If you look at your axes here, we're not counting by 1s here. What are we counting by on the y-axis? Hopefully you can see we're counting by 20s, right? 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, and so on. So we have to count by 20s here as well. So it's going to be from here to here, it's going to be 20, 40, 60. So this is going to be 60 miles right here. 
Another way to look at that is as follows. I'd like to show more than one way to do it. If you think about it, this is 60 right here. And this is 120 right here. If I take 120 minus this number, 120 minus 60, I'll get 60 as well. That's another way to do it. But I don't want to do it that way. I just wanted to show you another way to look at it. So again, we're counting by 20. So I went 20, 40, 60. And it's miles. I want to read this off. I, I want to write this in. This is the number of miles. So I'm going to put 60 miles. That's important that you put that miles in there so you know what this number represents. Now, what is this length here? This will be our change of x because x goes this way. What do you think this length is here? Well, on the x-axis, we're counting by 1s, right? Not by 20s, by 1s here. So this is actually just 1, 2. So one, we're starting here, 1, 2. So this is 2, and it is gallons, right? So I want to write the word gallons in there. So again, don't make that mistake here of putting 1, 2, 3. Make sure you read your axis to see what you're counting by. And now let's replace the change of y with this, or up and down which is 60 miles, so the change of y is 60 miles. And the change of x right here is this one, 2 gallons. And we're getting close to being done, right? I mean, what, what this is telling us is uh, every time we drive 60 miles, we use up 2 gallons of gasoline. But I want this written as a unit rate. And a unit rate means we have a 1 down on the bottom, not a 2. So to change this, to figure that out, just take 60 divided by 2. So I'm going to go 60 divided by 2 is 30. Just dividing these numbers. 60 divided by 2. 60 divided by 2 right here. That equals 30. You can always put a 1 down below a whole number, right? I can put a 1 down below here. It doesn't change anything because 30 divided by 1 gives us 30 back, right? So what I'm going to do is put a 1 down below here. Remember, you can always put a 1 down below a whole number. It doesn't change anything. So let me clear this out. And let's keep our units, or our units in here. It's miles. And then the bottom was gallons, right? Now it's written as a unit rate. What does that mean? There's a 1 down in the bottom. So if we think about this, um, we have 60 miles for every 2 gallons. Another way to look at it is that means we get 30 miles for every 1 gallon. So the unit rate is this piece right here. Now it says explain the real world meaning. I'm not going to write that out, but what this is really telling us is that every time we drive 30 miles, we use up one gallon of gasoline. Or in other words, we get 30 miles per gallon. That, that, that's how you can look at this as well. So I hope that's clear. Now let's go to the uh, second question here. And real quick, if you're taking the GED or, the, uh, or an algebra test and they ask you to explain the real world meaning, you just write out in a complete sentence it as you know what I just said. Every time I drive 30 miles, I use up one gallon of gas. Now, let's look at question two. It says find the y-intercept. Not That's a typo right there. Find the y-intercept and interpret its meaning. Well, what do you think the y-intercept is? Welcome back. I hope you wrote it down. And remember, there's a special letter for the y-intercept. It's B. So in other words, I'm trying to find the B value. Let me clear this out, just clean things up a little bit here. So the, the B value or the y-intercept is where this graph here touches the y-axis. And hopefully you can see this is my y-axis. This is the graph, and it actually touches right here at the corner. It touches right at zero, right here. Right there is exactly where it touches. So the B value or the Y intercept in this situation is zero. Keep that in the same color. What is the real world meaning of this uh, Y intercept? 
How would you explain that if you had to explain that on the GED math test or on an algebra test? How would you explain the meaning of this in terms of the graph? Well, it just means that if you drive zero miles, I'll actually write this down. If you drive zero miles, you use zero gallons of gas. Gallons gas. So that's the real world meaning of this right here. And that's kind of obvious, right? But that's how you would explain it if you needed to. Let's go to uh, part three here. It says now write the equation of the line. Now remember, the magic formula for the equation of a line is always y equals mx plus b. And you don't need to memorize this if you are taking the GED math test. It'll be on the formula sheet, but you need to know if you see a straight line, you can always use y equals mx plus b. And to write the equation, as I did in a previous video, you simply substitute in for m and b. And just leave the y and the x. So I'm going to bring down the y. I'll bring down the equal sign and I'm going to replace the M with the rate of change. M represents the rate of change or slope, which was 30 over 1. But I'm not going to show the 1. I'm just going to replace the M with the 30. I'm not going to write in the units when I'm writing the equation. And again, you don't need to show this 1. I'm just writing. Uh, it's important that you understand that 30 over 1 equals 30. I'm not showing the 1. Sometimes I like to, sometimes I don't. In this situation, when I'm writing the equation, I'm just going to write the 30. Then I bring down the x, bring it down, bring down your plus sign, and then replace the b with this value, because b is 0. So replace the b with 0. And that's the equation, but it's going to be written like this. It's just going to be written as y equals 30x right here. They're not going to show the plus zero. You don't need to show that plus zero because when you add zero, you can just, when you add or subtract zero, you can just drop it off. So y equals 30x plus zero is the same as y equals 30x. And this is my equation. So if you were to see a problem like this dealing with gas mileage and the equation was given, hopefully you can now see that the 30 represents your, uh, your gas mileage. It just means you get 30 miles per gallon. So I hope this video was helpful. As always, thanks so much for watching. And as always, I really hope you do well when you take that GED math test or an algebra test. I know the math's tricky. I get it. Um, I struggled with math when I was in high school. Trust me. So I try to explain things slowly and step by step. Have a great day. And again, thanks for watching.